Hey friends, welcome back to the Pro Organizers Coach podcast and YouTube channel. In today's episode, I'm going to help you figure out how do you price your services and which pricing model is correct for you in your business. So as a professional organizer, you may and you may not know that there are actually three different options for you to choose as your pricing model. And I want to offer you a thought. You can choose one, see if it works, and then you can always pivot later. So don't put so much pressure on yourself that you have to pick one and stick with it forever. But I do want to help you figure out hopefully the one that will work for you and will work for you forever. So when I first started my organizing business, everybody that I, I listened to and the podcasts that I listened to, the YouTube channels I watched, everybody that I watched was saying, oh, as a professional organizer, you do package pricing. That is what you do. And for me, that was extremely overwhelming because I was like, how do I go into a client's home and say, okay, the entire project is going to be 30 hours. And of course, every client that you go into their home to do a consultation, they want an idea of how long is this going to take or how much money is this going to cost? And so back then, I was like, there's no way, like, I don't want to tell someone, oh, it's going to take 20 hours and it actually takes way more or tell them 20 hours, they pay me, and then we actually get it done faster. Like the idea of that had so much pressure behind it that I stayed stuck for a hot minute around my pricing. So this is episode four, I think four, yeah, we're on four. <laughs> this is episode four of the How to Start Your Organizing Business series that I am redoing. If you go back to episodes I think two through eight, somewhere in there of the podcast, I did this originally and it has helped so many people, a ton of my members, people that I've done one-on-one -on -one coaching with, they have all said, oh, I went back and listened to those and took notes. So I thought, okay, we're at a hundred episodes. Let's redo the series because I've learned a lot more since then. That series is fantastic. Hopefully this series will offer a lot more. And then I have a $50 off coupon for you if you are ready to start your organizing business. Now, my How to Start Your Organizing Business course, I go so much deeper into this. Plus, you get three months free of the group coaching community. So you're able to pop your homework in there. You're able to get feedback. You can come to group coaching sessions. You can watch replays where I've talked to other people about their pricing. There are just as many episodes in our replay vault inside of the group coaching community as there are podcast episodes. <laughs> so you're almost essentially getting an entire other podcast that no one gets to listen to unless you are in the group coaching community. Now, you get in the course. It comes with a workbook. I walk you through it. You have me doing group coaching weekly and we do workshops inside of the membership. And then you also have access to me and the other ladies through the app that I chose for our membership so we could be a sisterhood, so we could connect with each other in between group coaching sessions. And so if you are working through the course and you're like, oh, I'm really getting stuck on this or I have a quick up quick question, you can message me or you can pop it in the group and ask the other ladies what their experience has been and what they do. So I just want to put that out there. The link will be in the show notes and in the description. And you want to make sure to use the coupon SAVE50 in all caps to get $50 off of that course or my website course. The coupon will work for either or it'll actually work for both if you would like to get both of them. All right, so on with the episode. I'm Samantha Brown, 
professional organizer, decluttering specialist, and business coach. I created Pro Organizers Coach Podcast to empower you to reach new heights in your business. I am on a mission to build a supportive sisterhood of passionate professional organizers. So whether you're a seasoned pro or you're just getting started, this podcast is for you. So when I first started my organizing business, like I said, I thought I could only do packages. So that was so overwhelming to me that I was like, okay, well, maybe I'll do hourly. Well, then that became, again, people asking me, well, how many hours is this going to take? How many hours are you going to be at my house? Like all these questions that I did not have the answer to. And what I've learned since then is that now I actually tell my clients from the very beginning, I do sessions. When you do session pricing, in my opinion and in my experience, it helps alleviate a lot of those questions. I normally tell my ladies that I'm coaching, start with a four-hour session because it gives you some extra wiggle room. I personally do a three-hour now, but it's just because of my schedule. You want to do a four-hour session, you price the session, and then you normally can tell your clients, I can do about a room per session, but it's based on how quickly you can make decisions. Now, the caveat to that is the kitchen, that normally takes two, the pantry will take one, the garage normally takes two sessions, the attic can take two or three, but on average, if it's like a master closet or if it's a bedroom, I tell them we can normally declutter in one session. And then if you need me to organize, I can come back and do that as a separate session, which you are more than welcome to go to my website, which is lovelaughorganize.co. And on there, you go to my services page and you can see a little bit more of how I have it broken down of the steps that I take my clients through and what each session entails. So let's get into the different options because I want you to understand what they are, the pros and cons of each of the modeling structures. So then that way you aren't basing your business off of what I do. You can base your business off of what will work best for you, your schedule, your um, clients, what would be best for them, depending on the type of clients that you plan on working with. All right, so let's jump into it. You have hourly versus sessions versus packages. So let's talk about the pros and cons of each. You have the hourly pricing. The pros for those are the flexibility for clients who may only need a few hours of work, which truly is not that often. Most of the time people need, I hate to say quite a bit of work, but they need work, right? And so, or they wouldn't be calling. And my advice for you, if you do choose to do hourly, is to make sure that you have a minimum. So the other pro is that it could be easier to track and bill for time spent. Um, And it's great for smaller projects or for clients with a limited budget. Especially when you're first getting started, you could feel a little more comfortable with that. Now the cons is the income can be inconsistent Some clients may be price conscious and think like, oh, well, every single hour costs this amount. And if I don't know exactly how many hours it's going to take, because that's where you get a little like on the cons. So if you tell them, okay, well, I think it's going to take about this many hours, which you all, like I said a minute ago, you always want to make sure, but it's based on how quickly you can make decisions or what comes up. In the meantime, because you don't know what you don't know until you get in there. And if you're doing like an unpacking job and you start pulling stuff out and there's a lot more little teeny tiny things in there than what you realized, it's going to take a lot more of your time. Or if all of a sudden the client's like, hey, I want labels on everything. Well, that's going to take a lot more of your time. And so doing the hourly could seem like a better option and it can be. But the problem is helping them understand and and for you to guess how many hours it's going to take. Um, and then 
Uh, the other con is that you may feel the pressure to work faster, which could impact the quality. So because you're like, oh, I'm on hourly and they have a budget and like all of the things. Right. And so that's why with sessions, the pros and cons of sessions for me and what I've learned is the pros It encourages clients to book blocks of time and be committed to that amount of time instead of just, hey, I'll be there at 8 a.m. We're going to do hourly. I could be there till 12. I could be there till three. It just answers. It makes it a very set like, oh, okay, for these four hours, like, you know, our session is going to be from eight to 12 or nine to one. And then that way they are prepared as well, because you want to help them feel as comfortable as possible. Now, again, you can't say, oh, in four hours, we're going to get all of this done. You cannot, do not ever guarantee that. It is better to under promise and over deliver than it is to guesstimate and be completely wrong because then all of a sudden you're going to feel like, oh, well, you know, I told them I could do this in one session. So since I did that, I should just finish the work for free because I told them I could do it in this many hours or in this one session. Like you have to be very careful of your wording, especially at first until you figure out about how long things take for you in in the process that you take your clients through. Another pro of sessions is it allows for focused, uninterrupted work, which can lead to better results. So it's very focused. I always tell my clients, you know, I like for them to work with me. Um, Even if they're elderly, I tell them, listen, I can become your hands and feet, but I need you around to help make some decisions because I focus a lot more on the decluttering piece. And so in that, I can't choose for you what you want to keep or what you don't. And then I tell them, you know, based on like, I would love to hear stories about things, but based on how quickly you can make decisions is going to impact how long this takes, right? Like, and I tell them, I can move as fast as you can decide, but it's a process and we're not going to know until we get in there. Like, it's okay to say those things to your clients because they don't know and there's no way for you to know either, even if when they ask. When they ask, be very upfront and honest. Ma'am, I am new at this. I think you know, ideally, I think it'll probably take us one to two sessions. And then that way, instead of it being like, oh, I think it'll take four to eight hours. Like that sounds a lot more different than I think we could get this done in about one to two sessions. But it's based on what we find when we get in there and how quickly you can make decisions. You know, so then that way, to me, it just works better for my clients. But again, let's keep going so you can figure out what works best for you and your clients. With the session pricing, the other pro is it's easier to predict income since sessions are pre-sold. Now, I say that in the sense of you know how much it costs for a session. And again, you can go to my website and look and see, but I do a three-hour session for two ninety seven. dollars So they know I'm going to be there for three hours and it's going to be $297. And then at the end of the session, I haul off anything they've chosen to release that day except for big furniture. And I tell them that. And so for me, I know I'm going to be working minimum about three and a half hours and sometimes even closer to four. But that's in my pricing. Like I know the $297 includes that. And then there's some clients that I end up hauling stuff off during a session because they're they're okay with it or because, oh, the car got completely jam-packed and the donation center is like almost next door. Let me just run this off real quick. I'll come right back and we'll pick up right where we left off. So you'll find your rhythm, but those first few clients, you want to, with any of the clients, actually, you just want to make sure you're upfront and honest and that you just tell them, hey, I'm new to this and I don't want to tell you something that I can't deliver on. And so we're going to do this one step at a time and do it together. But I think it will take, you know, this to this. And then that way you give them a frame. The other thing that I love about sessions is that then I can tell them, hey, we're going to take it one step at a time because we'll get to this con in a minute, but a con of the packages 
is a lot of organizers that set up their sessions and packages. They feel like they need to be working with one client and then get the job done like a contractor would. Like, okay, we start on Monday and we're done by like Friday. A lot of my clients, especially with the decluttering and learning systems and having to come back in and like sometimes reconfigure the systems, things like that take time. It's taken them a, a really long time to get here. And so it's going to be over time that we're going to help create those systems that work for them and be able to tweak those systems, right? And so I say that to let you know that I tell my clients, I do sessions and we can do back-to-back -back sessions if you would like. Like if you're on a time strength, um, like, oh, you just moved or, or you need to move and it needs to be done by this specific day, we can definitely book multiple sessions in that time frame. But if you're not in a hurry or on a time limit, then we can take this one step at a time and maybe we meet once a week until we get the job done. Or maybe, you know, based on your budget, you can actually only do once a month and that's okay too. I'll come back once a month and we'll just keep the momentum going. And what I found for a lot of clients, ideally, if you can do once a week or even once biweekly, that is ideal, especially if it's a huge project and they're wanting to like take time and go through a lot of the home and like rearrange a bunch of different stuff, declutter, you know, multiple different rooms and they want it to last for a long time and they want to learn the process and they want to be able to maintain it for themselves. It actually works really well if you tell them, hey, let's get this started. Let's get the momentum going but we don't have to do back-to-back -back sessions because I don't want to overwhelm you. I want this to be something that you look forward to. We take it one step at a time together. And then that way, as you, like you will learn and I can teach you as we go through. And you won't be overwhelmed by the fact that we're trying to rush or that it feels like we're trying to rush even if we aren't. And a lot of clients are like, that makes sense. So you just have to think about who are the people that you're working for and what would make the most sense to them. And then the other thing for sessions is it may require a longer commitment from you and the client. So I kind of put this under con. It's To me, it's a pro, but I've, I also see where it could be a con. So the longer commitment thing as a con could be, oh, well, I'm only getting paid for one session every other week. So if you're like, ooh, I actually need more of the money and I really would just like to get the job done, then that may feel like a con. The pro side to that, though, of having that income, knowing that it's going to be coming in every other week, is actually beneficial. And the other thing of sessions is you can be working with multiple different clients all at the same time, because if you know, if you have four or five different clients that you're working with every week or every other week, then you you start to build up that income that's coming through. Now, it does take time, but no matter how you do this, it's going to take time. So if you, you know, need to find a few cleaning clients that you work with, so you do have that weekly income, that's what I did in the beginning, um, to guarantee I could pay my bills and that helped relieve a lot of the stress. So then I could focus. I only had a few choice cleaning clients that I knew and that I actually enjoyed going to their homes. And then from there, the rest of it was me focusing on the organizing business. I was not trying to find new cleaning clients. I just picked a few and, and asked God to send me just a couple that would actually help keep consistent income coming through the door at the beginning until the organizing side could flourish and I can get the word out and get more clients because it does take time. You've got to plant those seeds and you've got to wait for them to start to bloom. All right. Now the packages. So the pros is that it provides stable and predictable income to an extent. <laughs> I just want to like each of these are kind of a pro and kind of a con as well. So the pro is, okay, I get a, let's say a thousand dollar check when they buy a 10 hour package from me. Well, that's fantastic. But then what if they want to do, you know, a three hour day this week, 
And then they're like, okay, well, let's wait on the other hours. Well, maybe it takes a few weeks before you get to the last hours of the package they've already bought. Well, then to me, it feels like I'm doing work, even though I've already been paid for it. It feels like I'm doing work that I'm not getting paid for that day. That's why I love having sessions because I get paid every single day that I'm working. And so for me, anytime I've had a client, like right now I have a client that I'm working for that it's a trust company that is paying me to come in and help her. So they like to do it in three sessions. Like they want to pay me for three sessions. I do the three sessions with the client and then they'll send me a check for the next three sessions. So for that, I've actually been waiting until after the three sessions, like at the end of the third session is when I cash the check. Because for me, I like knowing that that's there. And my other thought is, well, what if at some point they decide like, oh, well, we're done now and they've already paid me for those hours. Are they going to want me to reimburse them? Are they, you know, like it can just get a little wonky, right? Which is something, side note, in the paperwork on your website, you want to make sure to let people know purchased sessions are non-refundable. Maybe you can offer that they are transferable to someone else so they could gift them those out, like they could gift those hours to someone else if you choose to do packages um, or they can hold on to them until maybe six months from now when they need them or something. But you want to think about putting a date on there, like purchased hours are good for one year or something Um, because you do not want them calling you a year or two from now. You are actually charging a lot more and now all of a sudden they want their hours. Unless you do. If if you don't mind, that's okay. Again, this is your business. It's up to you. I'm just trying to give you a few different things to think about. And then the other piece of that is with the, um, like on your website and stuff, you want to make sure that they know the purchased hours are non-refundable and that it's in your paperwork, especially if you're doing packages, okay? Like you have to make sure that that's in there. Okay. Um, another pro is it encourages clients to commit to more extensive transform transformative work because when they have a bunch of money put into something, like they are more committed. But the other piece of this is you also want to be aware that if they've paid you two grand, they're going to expect results for that two grand. So just be careful how you word it and how you explain it to them if you are doing package pricing, okay? Because it's all about like the communications with your clients that is what matters. If you set up the expectation and the communication from the get-go, hey, this is how I work, this is what to expect, all of those things, well, then it's clear communication and they won't be upset about anything. But if you go to do a consultation and you're like, oh yeah, I could totally get this done. I sell packages. Here's my package pricing options. Which one would you like? And you don't take the time to explain, we might not get all of this done in this many hours. If we get to the end of this package and we need to purchase more hours, then that is what we will do. You have to explain it in a way and leave it almost a little open-ended because if not, they're going to expect like exactly what they think they have said they wanted for that job and you quoted them that cost. So just be careful that you don't make it seem like oh, this job and all of these things you've named, are it's all going to get done for this exact price, okay? Just be very careful. So the cons, again, it could be pricing may seem higher up front, which could deter some clients, and it also could have them expecting a lot more from you because in their mind, they're thinking, man, I paid two grand because they paid all that all at once, Um And it's more challenging to adjust if a project scope changes, which is why I love taking it with sessions one step at a time and telling them that up front. So that way, because projects do change, the scope of the project changes. You run into things. There's things that you didn't see when you did the consultation or that the client didn't tell you. Um, Maybe they didn't tell you they love to talk for an hour. Well, that hour is time that you're there. And so, you know, you will figure these things out as you go. But that's why 
when I came up with session pricing, I was like, this is what will work. It's a nice medium of both. And I can tell my clients were taking it one step at a time with the schedule, with the actual sessions, with what we get done in each session. It's it's a great way to set it up in a way that they are going to be happy and you get to be happy, but you also get to kind of shift as you go if needed without anyone getting upset. And then the other con is it requires careful planning to ensure profitability when you are doing package pricing because all of a sudden, like I said earlier, if you sell three packages and you get all this money and then you already go and spend it all, but you're still working with these clients for months to come to get these jobs done. And then you realize, oh man, I was spending all this time, um, you know, researching products and I was spending all this time, you know, doing things that I didn't realize I was going to be doing. Well, then that whole time, like you can definitely become burnt out and frustrated and they can become frustrated as well. So just be very aware. Um, and if you are stuck on your package, like on your package session or hourly pricing, I do unstuck coaching sessions. Um, you can go to proorganizerscoach.com and find the link there for one-on-one -on -one sessions. If you are a part of my community, it is only $47 for a, an unstuck coaching session. And most of the time, my community members actually get them for free because I can use them for the podcast. So if you're like, ooh, I could go join the group coaching community and get a coaching session, just tell me, hey, Samantha, I heard in your um, How to Start Your Organizing Business series that I get a coaching session with the fact that I am now a member. I would like to use that towards figuring out my package versus sessions versus hourly pricing, which formula I'm going to use and how I'm going to set that up to explain it to my clients. Because you also have to know this for your paperwork. You have to know this for your website. There's so many, like you just, you have to know what model you're using and how it's going to work itself out. So a coaching session is a perfect ex way to figure those things out. And I know the questions to ask to help you figure out which would work for you. And so, yeah, just book a one-on-one -on -one unstuck coaching session with me and let me help you figure out what will work best for you so you know moving forward and then you're not stuck at, I don't know, <laughs> um, which is a place I found myself a lot when I was first starting my business. All right, so a couple quick little things to think about to know which pricing model is right for you and then we'll wrap up. Consider your client base. If your clients tend to need short, straightforward projects, hourly pricing may be ideal. If you're working with people and you decide, you know what, they're, I'm, I plan on working with people that have ADHD or are neurodivergent, and I know they're only going to be able to do maybe two-hour sessions. Okay, well, then maybe you do hourly because that actually would work better for them. Um, or maybe you're working with kids or, you know, so that's where hourly could be a good thing. Um, just remember, you can also, you want to offer or like say that you have a minimum if you do hourly, because it has to be worth it. Like, you know, if you're driving 30 minutes to a client's house, you've done the phone call with them, you've done the consultation, you're driving 30 minutes to and from, you've used all that gas and time and effort and energy, and then you go to do a, an hourly session, an hourly um, organizing day and you get there and an hour in they're like okay I'm great I think I'm good and your hourly price is $50 so here's 50 bucks thank you and then all of a sudden if you don't have a minimum in place on your website and your paperwork all the stuff and you've not communicated that to your client then you've just gotten $50 but it was actually for the phone call time, the consultation time, all of the driving, the gas, and the day that you did that one hour of work or two hours, whatever. So just be th be mindful of that if you do the hourly pricing. Okay, um, another thing to consider about your clients is if you specialize in comprehensive transformation, packages can provide more value and commitment from clients. So if you are someone 
that is going to be offering like maybe let's say meal planning or some sort of thing that's kind of like a coaching thing with the organizing. And you're like, hey, I could take my clients from this to this in, you know, five one hour coaching sessions or six. Well, then maybe your package pricing is done almost like a coaching container would be right of six hours. So that's where package pricing could come in if you have a specific transformation you're getting your clients through. Um, and then for clients who need a solid block of time, but not a full package, or they need to take it one step at a time, session pricing can strike a good balance. You want to think about your financial needs. You want to determine the stability of your income stream and your comfort with potential functionality in work and income. As in, you need to know your numbers. When you don't know your numbers of what are your bills and then giving it a little bit of a buffer, but you've also got to think about taxes, which is about 25% is what I recommend that when you're first starting out, especially that first year and you don't know what your um, taxes are going to be, you want to put about 25% of each session, hourly, whatever packages, any income coming in from a client. $25 of every hundred needs to go into your savings. So you are covered come tax time. And then once you do your taxes, if there's money left over in the savings, well, then you get a bonus at the end of the year. But in my opinion, it's better to have that money setting there if needed than to realize that you actually owe money and you don't have any to put towards it, right? So that's a good way to prepare. But you want to think and reflect on How much money do I need to bring in each month? Um, Do I maybe have a husband that's actually paying most of the bills? And so I, this is more like play money for me. I don't have to have income coming in. Um, Okay, well then, fantastic. But if you're a single mom and you're like, hey, I'm the only one with income coming into my family and I have kids. And so these are all of the bills that we have. And right now I have a full-time job. I'd really like to quit that full-time job and start this business. Well, you don't want to just go jump and start this business without money put back. And maybe what I recommend for a lot of my ladies that are full-time is it it's actually better to go ahead and start the business and maybe work it on the weekends or when you're available and it, get this thing off the ground, get some clients coming through because it normally takes about nine months to a year before you are fully consistent all the time. And it takes a lot of work. And so if you are able to keep that hourly job, I just don't want you to get yourself in a position where you can't pay your bills. And so if the options are, (laughs) I start a business, but it fails, and then I have to go right back to finding a full-time job, or I can start this business slow and steady, and I can look towards the future and know that here within the next two to three years, I will be able to retire or quit the job I'm at now and easily transition into a business I've taken the time to grow. Well, then that is the ideal situation. Or if you want to do like I did and do a part-time job with starting the business and then just having certain days of the week that you're not available for sessions because you're working your regular, your part-time job. There's multiple ways to do this, but the point is, is that you need to look at your circumstances. You need to look at the amount of money you need coming in each month, and then you need to let that help you decide how you're going to price your services. So that way you don't find yourself in a situation later on where you don't have the money that you need to pay your bills. All right, and then really quick, There is essentially a formula to figuring this out, which is what I was just kind of talking about. But essentially, you want to estimate how much money you need, like I said, and you want to put a buffer on it. Um, So if, for instance, you know, I looked at my bills and all of my bills together were $3,000 a month. Well, I may want to say, ideally, I would like to make $4,000 a month just in case. So I would take that $4,000 for the month and then I would figure out how many hours 
am I able to work like in a session, right? And so if I'm going to do four hour sessions and I'm like, hey, I've got about 20 hours a week to do this. Well, then if I need the four grand and I'm going to be working 20 hours a week, then you do the math to figure out how much you are charging per session, right? Or per hour or for packages, whatever. Um, but whichever way you expect, if you expect to work 80 billable hours, well, then you know, hey, I have to charge at least $50 per month if I want, if I'm going to be working 20 hours per week and I need at least four grand to live. And the reason I took, oh, I need three grand to live, but I'm actually doing the 4,000 is because you need that extra buffer and you also do not forget to remember the 25%. So for me, I would be like, okay, I need at least, you know, the 20 hours, that's $50 per hour, which would be $200 per session of four hours. But I actually need to add 25% to that because that additional 20, like, because that's how much I need to live. Now I need also the 25% for tax purposes. And so I would take that $50 per hour. And then I would add 25%. And so then that way I'm still getting paid $50 per hour. But I'm also charging clients that additional 25%. So my taxes are covered. All right. So, and the way you do that is you put in $50 on a calculator and times it by 0.25. <laughs> and that will give you the, the amount that you need to add to the 50 I actually don't have it in my notes right here, but you get the point. Um, so that's actually sitting here bugging me. That would be like 10 extra dollars, right? No, 12.50. Oh my gosh. I see. <laughs> this is going to bother me that I did not give you the answer on this. And so right here off the cuff, just like as if we were in a coaching session, we are going to go and figure out yeah, twelve fifty. Okay, I was right. So then I would turn around and charge clients essentially sixty two fifty per hour. So that way I know that twelve fifty per hour is going into my savings, and I'm still getting paid the fifty dollars that I need for my bills with a little bit of a buffer because you never know what's going to come up in life. And I want you to enjoy this. I don't want you to barely be scraping by and be burnt out. I want you to enjoy the process because it is so much fun having a business and a sisterhood and a community and all the things. It's just it just takes time, right? So like you have to get it in your head that it's going to take time for this thing to grow. You will not have a line. I mean, maybe you'll have a line of people ready to work with you the second you launch. But even when that's happened and there's a lot of momentum with the launch, what I've seen for quite a few clients is they'll get a few people right out the out of the gate, but then there's a lull, which is it's taking that time for word to get around of like, oh, you know, Samantha can do this for me. Like here, look at the stuff she's done and for people to see the social media posts and for people to see your business cards at a local coffee shop. And it just takes time. And so I want you to have realistic expectations so that way you don't get burnout and that way you know I am in this for the long game because of like this is going to change my family's life. It's going to change my life, but it's also going to help my clients and I am called to this. So now that you have a clear idea of your services, of how you want to build this organizing business and which of the pricing models now that you know what your options are. Again, I've got a special price for you. So you get your $50 off of my Start Your Business course or my website course. Make sure to use the coupon code SAVE50 in all caps for the how to start your organizing business or the website course. Just want to remind you. And that way you can get long-term success out of your business and you're not stressed and you're not doing this on your own. And then, so we explored in today's episode, the different package versus hourly versus session pricing models. And we discussed how to choose the right model for your business. 
Now, remember, your pricing strategy should reflect the value that you bring to your clients while ensuring that you can still meet your financial goals like we talked about a minute ago. I thank you so much for watching. Whatever platform you are listening to this podcast on, please go give me a five-star review and rating. It helps so much. I know up until now, I've not even really been asking for reviews, which that's my fault. But at this point now, I'm two years in. I've put a lot of effort and I, I really want and know that there's so much value that I'm bringing you all. And so if you've gotten any value out of any episode ever, if you would please do that tiny favor for me and go give me a five-star rating. And if you're watching on YouTube, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you get notified every single time I have a new video out for you. I promise coming down the pipeline, there are so many good things that you are going to want to be a part of. I appreciate you so much for your time. Thank you for staying with me till the end. And if you ever have any questions, you can go to ProOrganizersCoach.com to reach out to me or DM me on Instagram, and I will be the one to get your messages and answer you back because I want you to know that I have got you, you are covered, and I'm praying for you. Thank you again for watching, and I will see you in episode five of the How to Start Your Organizing Business series. Thank you for joining us on this episode of the Pro Organizers Coach podcast. Go to ProOrganizersCoach.com to find all the ways that we can help you succeed in your business. Remember, you have the power to make a difference in people's lives through decluttering and organization. So keep honing your skills, embracing those challenges, and fostering connections. Girl, you've got this.